In the world of Microsoft, every day is like Christmas Day at the moment. They are releasing new features thick and fast. And in the last two months, they've released two new functions, Group By and Pivot By. And these two functions allow us to create pivot table style reports <laughs> in one single formula. Now, I'm not going to cover both Group By and Pivot By in this particular lesson. I'm going to save Pivot By for my next video so that we can do a side by side comparison with a pivot table. We're simply going to focus on Group By in this lesson. Now, the first First thing to remember is that Group By is currently only available to Microsoft 365 users and it has been rolled out very slowly. So if you are a Microsoft 365 subscriber and you can't yet see Group By in your functions list, then I would recommend that you keep on top of updates because it is definitely on its way. But if you do have it and you haven't yet had a chance to explore the functionality, that's what we're going to do right now. So let's dive in. Now, I'm just going to use a very basic data set in this example. You can see we've got some agent IDs just here. So these might be sales agents. We have different cities that they work across. These are cities in the UK. We have different areas of those cities and then the revenue and the profit that those sales agents have generated. Now, this is a fairly short data set just to keep things nice and simple for you. But this could apply to a data set with many, many more rows. Now, what Group By essentially does is it allows us to aggregate our data, much like when we're working with a pivot table. So if we go into this cell just here and let's type in Group By. There it is. Now, notice here that we do have quite a few arguments, but it's only the first three that are actually mandatory. Remember, any arguments that you see in those square brackets, those are optional. Now, we are going to go through all of them so you understand exactly what you can do with this formula, which will help you unlock its full potential in your little brain. Now, let's start out basic. The first argument, row fields. So, what are our row fields going to be? Well, I'm going to select the city array, C3 to C18. Now, this is very much a trust the process. We are going to go back and I'll explain to you exactly what this is doing. But let's press comma. The next argument is values. Now, I want to summarize by the profit. So what we're essentially telling the formula here is that we want to summarize the profit by city. Now, you'll notice in the city column, I have a few different cities in there, but they are repeated. So you can see we've got two Londons, we've got two Manchesters, a uh, few Liverpools, so on and so forth. So this is going to aggregate those. So we're basically going to get a unique list of cities where they're only listed once. And then we're going to get the aggregation of the profit, depending on what aggregation operation we select, which is coming in the next argument, because the next argument is function. Now you'll see here we get a big long drop down list of 16 functions that we could choose. And we've got our classic favorites in there. Sum, min, max, average, all of that good stuff. We also have a couple in here that you might not be aware of. Percent of, that's a brand new aggregation option. This was released at the same time as group by and pivot by. We also have something called array to text a bit further down. You might not be aware of that one yet. I'm going to show you an example of what that can do for you as well. But we're going to start simple. Let's just stick with doing a basic sum calculation. I'm going to press tab to select it. Now, those are the only mandatory arguments. So let's close the bracket and see what we get. So we get a unique list of all of the cities and we get the sum for each of those cities of the profit. That's what we're looking at. Now, check it out. It has also added a total row on the bottom. So we have a grand total at the bottom here. And of course, currently this is unformatted. I'm just going to apply some comma formatting to the entire column. But there we've managed to produce a pivot table style mini reports from just a single formula. So it is pretty cool. Now, the great thing about using this group by function is that everything automatically updates. So if you're used to working with pivot tables, if you add new data into your source data, you need to go back to the pivot table and refresh it in order to pull that data through. Now, we don't need to do that when we're using something like group by. If I was to change one of these entries, so let's change Bath to Birmingham and hit enter, check out what happens. It changes it in this table. 
So this is completely dynamic. Now at this stage, if I was to add another agent onto the bottom here, it's not going to update. It will work if you change anything within the current data set but not if you add stuff onto the bottom. Now, the simple and easy way to get around that is to simply put this data set into a table. Then whenever you add a new agent onto the bottom, it will reflect over here in the report. Now, I haven't done that because sometimes I think when you put your data in a table, the formulas will then use structured table references. And I find that table references tend to throw people off. They find just regular, normal references a lot easier to understand. So I'm going to keep my data out of a table, but just be aware that to make this even more dynamic, you could format this as a table. Control T and you're done. Now let's go back to our group by because we've really done just a very, very simple calculation. Now remember that group by is a dynamic array function. And with all dynamic array functions, they can only be edited in the cell that you constructed them in. So notice I'm clicked over here. The formula is grayed out in the formula bar. I can't edit it. But I can edit it if I click in this first cell, which is where I originally typed the formula. So don't be thrown off by that. That is a recognized behavior of dynamic arrays. Now, if we go back up to our formula, let's click at the end here and explore some of these other options. Now, let's make a little bit of a change. Now, instead of just having the city, maybe I want to list out the city and the area. So I'm going to change my cell reference just here to include both the city and the area range. So I'm going to highlight it in the formula and then I'm just going to select city and area. Let's hit enter and you can see that everything updates. Now, the one problem I find with this is that if you apply formatting and then you change things, you then have the wrong formatting applied to the result. So if you remember, I changed column I to comma formatting, but we now have text in here and I can see that we do have kind of a gap at the beginning. So I want to change that back to general and then I could change column I to comma separated. I'd probably do the formatting right at the end once I have my report looking as I want it to look. But again, just be aware of that. Now, what about if I also want to include the revenue in my report? Well, I can do exactly the same. I can change this cell reference just here to include both the revenue and the profit. Hit enter and everything is going to update. Now, one thing you might be noticing here is that the output currently doesn't have any column headings, but I have a sneaky suspicion that we might be able to change that in those other additional arguments. So let's click in the first cell. Let's go back up to the formula bar and we're going to check out some of these optional arguments. So let's press comma. The next argument is field headers. So this is where we can tell Excel that yes, we want to have field headers at the top or no, we don't. Now we have four options. The first one is no, our data doesn't have headers. The second one is yes, it does, but I don't want to show them. The third one is no, but generate. I wouldn't recommend that. Some of the results you get are really dodgy. The fourth one is yes and show. Now my data set does have column headers and I want to show them. So I'm going to select that final option. Comma. Total depth. What does that mean? Well, this is basically if we want grand totals and subtotals turned off or on. And you might be noticing as we're going through these, some of the similarities when it comes to working with pivot tables. In pivot tables, we can choose if we want grand totals and subtotals turned off or on. Same deal here. So we have no totals, grand totals, grand totals and subtotals, grand totals at the top, grand totals and subtotals at the top. Now, I don't like mine at the top. It really confuses my eyeballs. So I want to turn on grand totals and subtotals. So I'm going to select option two, comma, sort order. So this is where we can choose a column to sort by, and then we can choose if we want to sort in ascending or descending order. Now, the thing you have to remember about this argument is that it needs an input of an index number. Now, what is an index number? Well, an index number is one, two, three, four. So much like in a V lookup, we number our columns from left to right. So the city is column one, the area is column two, revenue, column three, profit, column four. So it depends which column we want to sort by. So I want to sort by the profit column, which is column number four, and I want to sort in descending order, which means I'm going to have the highest profit at the top going down to the lowest. 
Now, if you want to sort in descending order by the fourth column, you need to enter minus four. If I wanted to sort in ascending order by the fourth column, I just enter four. If I wanted to sort in descending order by the second column, it would be minus two. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to do minus four. And then the final argument that we have here is filter array. So this is where you can specify if you want to filter out any results. So maybe I don't want to include any sales for the city of London. So what I could do here is I could select my filter array, which is going to be the city. And I'm going to say, don't include London. So we've made quite a few changes there. Let's hit enter and see what happens to our report. Well, there we go. So we should be able to see all the changes that we've made taking effect. We've got our column headers at the top. We have our subtotals underneath each group and we have our grand total at the bottom. Our results are sorted by the profit column in descending order. And I'm just going to put comma separator in there to make that easier to see for both of these. And we no longer have any results for London because we excluded it. So those are all of the arguments that you have when you're working with the group by function. Now, what else could we do with this? Because currently the information's there, but it, it doesn't look particularly great. I want to make the heading stand out. I want to make the subtotal stand out. Well, this is where we can combine group by with conditional formatting. So we're going to start out by applying conditional formatting so that it formats just this heading row in bold. And let's give it a double underline as well. Now, how am I going to do this with conditional formatting? Well, what I could say here is that when you find a row that contains the word city, for example, apply conditional formatting to the entire row. Because I don't have anything else in this data set that has the word city in it, it's only going to pick up the top row theoretically. So let's give that a go. I'm going to select everything in here. Conditional formatting. Let's go to new rule, user formula. So what is our formula going to be? We're going to say equals when this cell and we need to make this mixed referencing. So we only want to lock the column, not the row. If this is absolute referencing, which is the default, if it looks like that, when we apply our formatting, it's only going to apply formatting to cell H4. It's not going to be able to format the entire row. To do that, we need to remove that second dollar symbol so that the row is unlocked. So we're going to say when that's equal to city, then we can select format and we're going to say we want to change the heading row to bold. And as I said, let's give it a double underline. So we're going to give it a nice green color. And I don't think we have a double underline option in here, actually. Let's just select a line instead. And I'm going to apply that to the bottom. Let's click on OK and OK again. And check it out. It's done exactly what I want it to do. Now I'm going to do something similar to make these subtotals here stand out as well. So once again, I'm going to select the entire table. And remember, if you want conditional formatting to account for additional rows at the bottom, you can extend this down to include more rows so that when other results get added, the conditional formatting copies down. So this time I'm not going to select the heading row. I'm going to select all of the information excluding that heading row. I'm going to go conditional formatting, new rule, user formula. Now, what formula do we need this time? Well, if we take a look at wherever we have a subtotal, in column I, there is a blank, and that's the same for each of the subtotals. So we could say to conditional formatting, look in column I, every time you find a blank cell, apply formatting to the entire row. So we're going to say, look here, and we're going to remove that second dollar symbol so that that formatting can travel across the row. And we're going to say every time it equals blank, we want to apply formatting. And the formatting, I'm going to have a green background and let's do bold italic font. Click on OK, click on OK again, check it out. We now have exactly the result we wanted. We have those subtotals and grand totals highlighted and 
This data set is a lot easier to read now that we've done that. So those are sort of some formatting tricks that you can employ when you're using group by to build a report. Now there's one more thing I'm going to show you when it comes to group by, and that is array to text. This might not be an aggregation option that you've come across previously. So what does array to text do? Well, let's just take a look at that formula without putting it inside of group by first of all. So if I just go down here and type in equals, this is what we're looking for. Now the screen tip says returns a text representation of an array. Interesting. So let's press tab. I'm going to select any array just here. I'm just going to select a few. Just the first four cells in the city column. Now if we just do that, and press comma, we have an optional argument. Now I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to do a very basic array to text on a very small range of cells. Let's hit enter. Check it out. It flips them around so they're running horizontal and puts a comma in between. So it's basically changing a vertical array of cells into a horizontal array of text. So that is pretty cool. And we can use array to text inside group by. So what might that look like? Well, what we can do down here is I could say group by row fields. Let's use city again. The values, I'm going to choose area for values. And this time the function we're going to choose is array to text. Let's close, hit enter and check out what we have. We now have each of the cities and the areas that belong to those cities. And when we have more than one area, it runs horizontal and it's separated with a comma. Notice we've got the total here, which is basically everything. Now we can go back and we can get rid of that. So if we go back to our formula, press comma, we could choose to add field headers. Why not? Let's say yes and show total. I'm going to say no totals. Let's hit enter and you can see that that looks a lot better. So that's a very quick run through of some of those main points when it comes to using group by. It's also worth noting that a very popular usage of group by is to change sum to a lambda formula because basically everything that you see in this argument just here is effectively a lambda, but we could add our own lambdas in here as well. So just be aware of that. Again, it's not something we're going to show in this lesson. I might do another video on that. This is just really an introduction to the group by function. If this is the first time that you're coming across it. That's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like, follow, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.